Good morning. I'm Denise Dryden here live from Montana talking to you about the weekly things that come up. And last week it was just, nope, no, I'm not doing it. I couldn't get a topic and I was tired and things were waffling around as far as energy. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to give myself permission not to do it. It was kind of fun. <laughs> so I'm back. And I'm back today and what I want to talk about is making assumptions because the assumptions that we make get in the way and they, they inhibit our ability to grow. <clears throat> all of a sudden my throat's got a little frog in it. That's funny. Okay, so when we assume, I'm always going to start with a dictionary because it gives us some, some words to work with. So as, when we assume, we take it on. We take it upon ourselves, right? We assume responsibility. Um, we pretend to have or we pretend to be. I'm going to assume that I'm the boss. I'm going to assume that I'm in charge, right? <laughs> uh, we take for granted. Um, we take something to be true, right? We accept something to be true without question or proof is, in a, is when we assume something. We don't necessarily have to know what the truth is. We don't have to ask any questions. We just trust that person, so we're going to assume, right? Um, and we believe somebody. We just we put our put our trust into somebody else, and if they say something, we believe them. So that's what happens when we assume. I think what's interesting is that assumption is the action of assuming. So when we have when we make an assumption, what we're doing is we're laying claim to something. We're taking possession of it. You know, we're assuming, um, or we take assumption of the property, of the estate, of the role of the leader, right? We act in an asserting way. We step in and we take charge. And then we take on power and responsibility and we claim authority. So assumptions when we claim authority, like I know this to be true. It isn't just that I'm assuming, it's that I'm committed now. I'm in the assumption mode. <laughs> Now, there was this little caveat that as I'm going through the, the, the definitions, there's this Catholic church belief in assumption, which is when you are taken in, when you are taken up by God into heaven. And I thought, and they have churches named assumption, they have the assumption process. I thought that's kind of interesting because everything I'm doing is based on the four agreements and the fourfold way, which in the four agreements is make no assumptions. So... Let's go through this and find out what that actually means, right? So it's when we take one or two pieces of information. I got this and I got this and that little tiny line is pointing me that way. So I'm going that way. <laughs> I heard it on two newscasts. I heard it from two people. I heard it from somebody who's done their research. You know, it's when we take something, it can be just a tiny little particle or two and we jump out way into a completely different direction makes sense. So as parents, we struggle with assumptions when we jump to conclusions like, you know, we get a first quarter report card and we're like, wow, what happened? Right. Um, I had a client who the guy's out doing his the dad's out doing uh, the mowing of the lawn in the backyard in the early spring. And he finds a bag of weed in the trees right by the fence where the kids jump over it all the time. So his assumption is that his son is smoking weed. Um, was ended up not being the case, but it was weed, right? Um, we assume that kids are going to go to college. We assume that they're on a college path. When we have behavioral issues, we assume something's going on. So as parents, assumption gets in the way, right? Um, within our relationships, we jump ahead of ourselves. Wow, you know, I've gone out with this guy like for two months. It must mean blah, blah, blah. We take for granted, you know, hey, he will always do this or she, this is her role. I expect her. I, I assume she's going to, she's going to continue to do that. Um, and we create expectations when we make assumptions in our relationships and we don't always connect the words with the actions because we've assumed, okay, so he's a good guy and no matter what he says, his words are going to be okay. And when you're dealing with narcissism, when you're dealing with deceit, when you're dealing with shame and blame and guilt, the words and the actions don't always line up. So, but we're in assumption, which is they do, okay? In our work, um, we set goals, we predict, we plan, you know, we hope for things, right? <laughs> we set quarterly goals, annual goals, we start new products, we, 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 we hope for raises, we hope for promotions. And 
Um, quick story, I was working for a therapeutic young adult program in Bend, Oregon, and after three six-month reviews, I kept getting the stall. And I was a single mom and I needed the money, right? It was a $12,000 jump in salary. But it kept getting the stall. And I was taking it personally, like, I don't know what's going on. And I was overly trying, try, try, try. Until um, I was up working one night and the board, the, the board of directors were, work, were meeting. They didn't know I was there. And the director said, you know, she's a single mom. She's got a house here. She can't go anywhere. I can string her along for another six months, maybe even a year. That assumption was that I wasn't going anywhere. So in work, we have assumptions. We have places where we make jumps or we start down a path that are not necessarily healthy for us. So it's when we jump ahead. It's when we get risky and cocky and arrogant, like, hey, I got this, this, and this. That means that's coming. And it's when we fill our own stories, right? Through our own lens, which is what I see is what's right. And if it's from gathering information and making assumptions, it might have some flaws. If it's coming from intuition and knowing, you know, it comes from a different place. It's also false trust. And, and, and it's when we trust something that we don't necessarily know that that was such a good idea to trust, right? So um, within the four agreements, there's make no assumptions. And this is the place of the sage. This is the place of the wise one. This is the, the, the growth of the queen, right? So it's the queen who holds that role if we were to put court cards on the four agreements. So within the four agreements, the prince, the warrior, is always do your best, right? You go down to the bottom, which is the princess, the healer, which is like, pay attention. Don't take it personally. Then you go over to the right side where the king resides, and the king is be impeccable with your word. He's a visionary, which means whatever I see and say has to be impeccable because I'm putting something in motion. When you add these three and you come over here to the queen, which is make no assumptions, you know, what we're really looking at is releasing attachments and not jumping to any conclusions, which is such wisdom, right? It's where mastery and wisdom and internal patience and trust resides. It's where our greatest guidance resides. So when we're in a place of not making assumptions, what we're doing is we're slowing things down so that we can start to lay out and, and, and go through some processes. So I have six steps for you on how I broke down making no assumptions or making assumptions in what happens, right? So I think the first, uh, first one I wanna start with is to take an event or a discovery or a plan and sort of pull it up in front of you and get really present with it. That's the term I wanna use, get present. Slow it down into slow motion. Chart it out, well then this happened and this happened and I see this and I see this and I see this. So that you sort of lay it out like a map. This is what I am assuming is gonna happen. I've been a director, you know, in quotes, of admissions for 18 months and doing the job of the director, but I don't have the salary yet. So I'm laying it all out. Number two, expand your field. Become the observer. What happens when I bring it up? What happens with their eye contact? What happens with um, the request? What are the, you know, and start to put the, the cause and effects together so that you can see what's around each step. That it isn't just a solid, flat, three-dimensional map. It has lots of components that are spinning and moving. So pay attention on multiple levels. That was number two. Number three, build awareness in what do I know and what do I not know? Because what I don't know, we have to be really honest with ourselves. These are the unknowns. This is where I'm not sure where it's going. I'm writing a book right now. It feels finished. And there's still some things that I don't know if I am finished. And what do I not know right now? So take the gathering information and play with it. See it from multiple perspectives and be honest with what you see, what you know, and, and where your blind spots are right? Because it's about what you know. So if we're making an assumption, let's go back to the dad with the weed in the background, in the backyard. His position was weed in the backyard. Don't trust my son. My son must be smoking weed. What we did when we laid it out and said that we don't know is that had he ever seen him with weed before? Was weed an issue? No. Well, um, 
what did was this a purchase bag a grown bag how do you know where it came from and it started to kind of become much more um attainable as far as information as we broke it down okay number four notice where you're stuck <laughs> notice where you're stubborn where you're rigid where you're over righteous you know like hey i've done my research or search or i talked to my doctor and my doctor says this so out of the way, right? Um, it's when we're righteous and we feel like we have to prove something. It's where we defend our assumptions. <laughs> Notice where you get stuck and stubborn because that's one of the, the shadow sides of the queen is that when she thinks she knows something, she thinks she knows it, but if she doesn't really know it and she's defending it with stubbornness, it gets kind of interesting, right? Number five, hold this part of you that sort of righteous, stubborn, rigid, and, and, and wonder where is the lack of trust showing up? Because it's usually a lack of self-trust, trust in others, trust in the process, trust in guided information, trust in your inner knower, trust in people on the outside. So trust is an issue when we're making assumptions. And sometimes when we assume um, power and authority is because we don't trust other people. So our assumptions can really be about like how we grab a hold of things and start to steer, not necessarily in the right direction. <laughs> and number six, I think the key here is to go, um, is to slow it all down and to go silent. Because when we can sort of take it all in, which is what am I noticing? Here's the, here's the map. Here's all the different directions. Here's what I'm beginning to know and build. Ah, here's where I keep hitting a wall where I am so stubbornly wanting to insist that I am right, right? And man, I just don't trust this kid. I don't trust this boss. I don't trust this scenario. So when we can get into all of those pieces, and we can make sure that we're not gripped on them, we're not holding on, we're not steering, we're not assuming control, we're not assuming that we know, we are allowing things to happen, and that's the role of the sage, is to go like, well, I've watched it five, six times from all sorts of directions, and this is what I know from this place. And it's not solid and it's not gripped, it is wisdom. Wisdom is different than facts that are steered this way. So at this period of time when there's so much going on in our country, in our world, um, with our finances, with our health, with everything, I'm going to invite you to make no assumptions. If you want to, if you want to dive into this and you want to do some work with me, I'm always available to coach. You can find me on Denise Dryden excuse me, denisedryden.com. Um, please like, share, and you know, click on anything. You can go back and look at other uh, videos. And the book is in final editing and uh, the cover is designed. It's called The Indigo Assignment. I will keep you posted as we go along. Have a great Sunday. See you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.